Well, good morning. Today I put together some information um, on our uh, pronghorn population in the state. I uh, put together some results of our, our most recent surveys. And also I want to talk briefly about uh, some updates on our management and research. I'd like to start first with a little bit of background. It's always kind of interesting to look back real quick to see where we've come from. Um, for antelope in the state, uh, it was estimated that uh, prior to 1800, we had over 700,000 antelope. Um, that's, that's a lot of critters in South Dakota. They were considered extirpated, like many species, east of the Missouri River by, by the early 1900s, and they were severely depleted um, on, in the western part of the state as well. To the point that in uh, 1911, our, our legislature passed a law that made it, made it actually illegal to kill an antelope. And about 30 years later, our antelope population was beginning to rebound. We had about 11,000 in our primary range in, in Harding and Butte counties. And subsequently, a year later, um, the department issued its, its uh, um, first season of, of 500 licenses in 1942. And we've been continuing on since. And in 1950 to 1985, we, we, we put an extensive effort towards transplanting antelope across the state. We brought in antelope from, from other states, and we also moved some animal herds um, within our own state as well. So where are we at today? Um, today we do about uh, three primary surveys to try and assess and monitor the population of antelope in the state. Um, we do a hunter harvest survey, an aerial survey, and a fall recruitment survey. I'll talk about those today, obviously. Um, just want to give a quick update on, on management. Um, we, we do have the pronghorn management plan out there. I, I know all of you have received that. Um, we have received some comments. Um, we're in the process of, of uh, looking and evaluating those comments. And also I'm going to give you an update today briefly on our research project that we just started here. I'm um, looking at some antelope and deer surveys in particular. First, let's start with our, our, uh, our rifle season harvest. This is looking back at 2011 here. The, the data are in, and we harvested about, about 4,500 animals across the state. And as you can see, that's been on decline. We, we peaked out somewhere in about 2008 of about 17,000 antelope. So we went from 17,000 down to about 4,500, a substantial decrease. And you can see, we, we decreased last year as well, our, our license numbers to try and accommodate the lower population numbers. You know, overall, hunter success um, was about 50%, um, which isn't bad, but when we have strong populations for antelope, we like to see 60 to 70% success out there. Um, so we have a ways to go yet. And this is the trend data for our, our firearm uh, antelope seasons. Um, there's several um, data points here to look at, but I want to concentrate you on the, the colored circles here. Again, in 2008, that was our peak harvest, and every year since, our, our harvest numbers have gone down, as has our license numbers in our population. So um, all those data do trend together. Again, you can see our success is lower here the last few years with lower numbers of animals. Now, archery harvest obviously isn't as significant, but um, it is a, another important user group. Uh, archery hunting in the state is unlimited to both residents and non-residents. Last year we harvested um, just a little over 300, 300 animals across the state. Success has been very low the last few years with lower numbers of antelope out there, as you might expect. Um, but it was actually pretty decent when we did have a lot of numbers uh, or a lot of antelope uh, in the state there. Um, a few years back, we did start a mentored youth uh, pronghorn season as well. Um, this is unlimited. Um, it, it's, it's been, um, I wouldn't say overly popular, but it's definitely provided some opportunity for some youth out there that normally wouldn't have had that opportunity to, um, to be introduced into antelope hunting. So that, that's great from that aspect. You know, success really isn't bad for first-time hunters there. Last year was still 32%. Now I want to move on to our, our recruitment surveys. It's another thing we do to, to look at to monitor our populations. Um, this survey is, is done in August and September, so we haven't done it yet. Our, our goal is to count 10% of the population out there, of the doe population. That's what we try to obtain to, to get an adequate sample size. These are random counts. They're, they're not on routes. Some of, some of the counts are opp opportunistic when, when staff are doing other things out there in the field. 
Um, these are all, all conducted on the ground. Uh, this survey is where we get our fond to doe ratios or an estimate of recruitment into the population. For 2011, we had 67 fawns per 100 does. That's about the lowest we've seen in probably 20 years or so in the state of South Dakota here, so it was very low. Um, and for 2012, I think it's important to point out it's an unknown at this point. Um, we would sure hope and, and most of us would assume it's going to be higher than last year. That's coming off of three really hard winters in the, in the antelope range in the state. We had a really nice open winter here this last year, so um, our assumption would be that recruitment is definitely going to be better than it was last year, but um, that still remains to be seen. Here's the overall trend of our recruitment across the state again, just, just pointing out that um, we, we were on the low end there. We hadn't been that low since, since the mid-80s. Um, on average, we do pretty good in South Dakota. That, the 80, 80 fonts per 100 does is, is really a good recruitment for, for a lot of the antelope range in the nation. Next survey I want to go to is our aerial surveys. Um, we just finished these this year. We, we, we conduct this survey in May and June. Um, our, our goal is to survey 33% of, of most of our game management units. Now in some of our units of lower density antelope, we survey at 100%, and in particular those are the units that are east of the river. There may be a few here in the future west of the river that are low density that we look at surveying 100% as well, but for the most part we're we're surveying about a third of each unit, and, and we're, we're flying an aerial transect, usually about 200 feet off the ground, and we're counting a quarter mile out each side of the plane, and we'll do that every mile and a half, so it's about a third of the unit. So our estimate um, from those surveys this year is, is about 22,000 adult animals. We're only counting adult animals, not fawns, because fawns are, are not real visible this time of year. They're, they are on the ground, but most of them are hidden. Um, this is about a 5% decrease from last year, and as you can see, we're about 6,500 bucks and 15,000 15, uh, does across the state. Now, here's, here's the trend of our adult population. I emphasize adult. Um, of course, we peaked here at about 50,000 adult animals. Um, this year, we're, we're down here about, uh, you know, 22,000 animals here. So, um, really, really been declining fast here. We're glad to see this finally starting to taper off, and, and we're hopeful it'll, it'll come back around here quick. Now this is the, the uh, pronghorn estimate for all animals, and this will include recruitment. Now, like I said before, we, we actually don't know what recruitment's going to be this year for, for 2012, so there's some, some assumptions here. But, but assuming, which we would call worst-case scenario, assuming recruitment is the same as last year, um, we're going to be at about 32,000 total animals. Um, across the state, and, and again, um, you know, this, this is hopeful. We're hopeful this, this is going to start coming back up, and, and it should with our, our harvest rates. I did mention the, the pronghorn management plan that we're, we're in the process of, of trying to finalize. That's our stated objective in the plan, anywhere from 50 to 60,000 animals, so that's what we want to get back up to here in the near future. This is a map of, of pronghorn density of, of adult animals that, that uh, from our surveys this year, um, the colors don't, don't play out real well here, but um, as you can see here, the, the dark, dark yellows are the higher density areas down here in Fall River and Butte and part of Meade and, and some in, in Harding County as well. We also um, put together a change in density from 2011 to 2012. This is a pretty busy map, but in general, the blue areas is, is where we, the density decreased, and, and the, the, the yellowish areas are, are areas where density increased. Um, now, you can see this is just some natural fluctuations. The important part is, is that one color doesn't override the other. In fact, we'd like to see more yellow, actually, right at this point. But uh, for the most part, it's, it's pretty even, as demonstrated in our survey counts, that our population is, is, is very near to what it was last year. So. With all that, um, we have our season recommendations um, that we've made to the commission. This year we're recommending that the commission um, offer 40, about, about 4,300 licenses total. Um, this is a reduction of 32 percent overall for license numbers, um, and it equates to a reduction of, of about 42 percent in tag numbers because some of those licenses were, were double tag licenses. We're also recommending that non-resident hunters are not eligible to apply until after the second draw. Um, in 2011, 
we, um, we did offer about 457 non-resident licenses. Um, if you look at uh, similar um, percentages this year, we'd prob probably be around um, 320 non-resident licenses um, if you were to offer them this year. Um, of course, non-residents non will still be eligible for archery pronghorn. Um, last year we sold about 309, and if the proposal goes through um, as is, I'm, I'm guessing that number would probably increase to, to try and meet some of that non-resident demand. One thing I did put together here is, is uh, a table on when the commission has removed non-resident licenses in the past. I thought this would be good to look at. A little history here. Um, prior to 1982, there were no non-resident firearm licenses. Um, there were, however, archery non-resident licenses throughout this whole time period that I'm going to talk about, but this is just firearm only. In 1983, the commission decided to start allowing non-residents to come into the state to hunt firearm, firearm antelope season. Huh, I guess we can have play a game here, but I don't know how to get rid of that. Um, so, we were at about 67,000 animals. Um, we kept our 8% non-resident licenses all the way till 1986 when the population crashed to about 14,000 animals and the commission again pulled non-resident licenses. That stayed the same till 1991 the population was, was near 47,000 animals. The commission decided well we'll give them a few more put in 1% non-resident licenses. 1992 population still continued to increase and the commission went back to 8%. This stayed the same so again, in 1997, population crashed. I'm sure most of you remember the winter of 96, 97. Population crashed sub subsequently. Commission went back to 0%. That stayed the same all the way till 2002. Population was around 33,000. Of course, it was the year before, too. It was kind of stabilized. The commission went 7% that time, and then they felt comfortable to go back to 8% when it was up to 40,000 and then it's been 8% ever since. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of background on, uh, on, on where we've been with non-resident license allocations. With that, just uh, looking a little bit at our future work here, of course, like I mentioned, we are finalizing the, the uh, pronghorn management plan and looking at comments, so I expect to get that done fairly soon here. And we also are just starting a research project um, looking at fall recruitment surveys. Um, we're doing, looking at deer surveys, but we're also looking at pronghorn as well. I'm looking at better ways to, to try and uh, get more consistent data and to evaluate some of the data that we are getting for our, our fawn to doe ratio. So taking a hard look at that. And that's uh, 